Everybody on Facebook, give them a big round of applause. Get ready. God is going to do some good things this morning. And if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like for you to go to the book of Psalms and just hang out there for a moment, okay? How many know that the number one thing that's going on, I titled this, However. How many know when God shows up, things can be going weird. However, when God steps in, things change. I did a message about, I'd say 10 years ago, called But God. You know, it was but God, if it not have been but for God. Do you know that God is still into the however? No matter what they say to you, however, with God, he can give a different answer. Amen? How many have ever had God step in a situation that you had no other way to do, but however, when the Spirit of the Lord showed up, things were different? Anybody ever have that happen in their life? I have. However, God showed up in the hospital room and brought my wife home. Somebody, come on. However, God showed up. Well, with the economy the way it is and all the inflation and things that are going uncertainly, and i got to be honest, I'm tired of hearing it. I see it all going up. Some of the gas prices went down. Somebody, they praise the Lord. But a lot of things, people lost 401Ks, everything dropping. It got all uncertainty. So my wife got an email. Some of you know this already. Some of you don't. She got an email. And in the email, it basically said, hey, Paul, and it was from the main lady over her uh Early steps all the way from Manatee County down to Fort Myers, down to Naples. How many know when you get an email from your boss, you better open it up? Can I get an amen? Turn your neighbor and say, shake it up. Come on. And in that email, it began to say, you have the state of Florida cut their budget by $100,000. And in another location of the early steps in the state of Florida, watch this. They let 13 people go. However, Paula, in your position... We're, we're going to, we like how you talk, we like how you greet the people, how you bring the joy, how the happiness, if I get anything wrong, let me know. Because when she started reading it to me, she called me Brian, and when she did, she said, don't think too much as I'm reading it, because the lady's given all the bad news at the beginning. But then there came however, everybody say however, come on. We've noticed, we like your position, let's go, your worth ethics, the joy that you bring to the office, uh, you will not be affected. However, everybody say however again. Say it like you mean it. We decided to look at the scales where your position is being paid, and we're going to bring you up and gave her almost $2,500 and gave her more during a recession. God turned it around. When they're letting people go, they gave her more money. Somebody praise the Lord in here. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, the blessing's coming your way. It doesn't matter. But when you get that email, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure Paula was like, uh-oh. And then as it went on, she went, aha, am I right? Because that's when she called me and said, don't judge it until I'm done. Because I thought, uh-oh, here you go. So praise God. Let me say, our God is a God of however. Can we get an amen? Say it like you mean it. Say, however. however. Woo. So. You can know when things go wrong. However, there's somebody in heaven. You're his child. You're the son and daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who created the universe, who will never abandon you. He knows what's going on. Tough times come. The boat might rock in the storm, but however, Jesus is in the bow sleeping. Help me out. And he got up and said, hey, how long am I going to have to put up with you guys? Peace be still. He's a God of power. Go to Psalms chapter 3, verse 1 through 8. You're going to love this on Facebook. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Have you ever had it seem like nothing went right? Now this happened. This guy's upset at me. Oh, this fell through. Sometimes all of a sudden, what else can go wrong? He said, how they've increased that trouble me. Many are those who rise up against me. So David's in a bad shape right now. Many are they that say of me, there is no help of him from God. How many people, God's not going to help him. There is no God. They're not going to happen. God's not going to help him. He's going to have to go in there. Y'all, you know what? Here, what ifs? I get tired of the what ifs. Anybody else get tired of what ifs? But here he goes on to say, verse 3, But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. Come on. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. You want why it sustained him? Because he got rid of the what ifs. 
What if they come at me? All these people hate me. These people don't like me. What if? No, he understood that God was his rock, his protector. And he said, I woke because the Lord, he slept good at night. Everybody say, I need to sleep good at night. Come on, somebody. He slept good at night. And he goes on to say, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on their cheekbones. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Listen, but God, like I said, however, everybody's against me. Is God's not going to help me? He said, but you know what? I'm going to be able to sleep at night because you're going to sustain me, Lord. How many know God is a God of however, no matter how much junk is coming up against you? Everybody say, however again. Well, I come to share today because it's true. All of us have had those, but what if? But what if? Pastor Ken Hughes told me one time <clears throat> he, when he had a church, he had one board member that every time they all were ready to do something, he always did, but what if, what if this? What if that? What if that? And I, he says, I get it, but he never was positive about anything. And he said, God brought you along that we can get to the vision and accomplish it, not to bring up all the what ifs. Well, what if this happens? You know how many what ifs we had here since we've been here? when they had a fight with the YMCA and they were moving out and this one, that, what if? Well, guess what? They called me this week, said, hey, we just want to let you know we love you being there. Would you like to come to the board and meet with the board and, and, and share your heart of how things go? I said, yeah. How many know? I believe that's going to be a good however. Something good is about to happen this Friday, so be praying for me because I think God's about to do something explosive. Can I get an amen? Everybody needs to forget about the what ifs. That keeps us up at night. What if this? What if that? Come on. We've seen these things not work out in the past. And when sometimes something doesn't work in the past, like I prayed for my mother. And I asked God to heal her of cancer. Well, the cancer stayed and she passed away. Well, that could make you say, well, why am I going to pray for this one or that one? Because what if it doesn't happen? What if God does? You still have to do what God wants you to do. She was in the condition because all of her life she smoked 45 years cigarettes. And you know what? Sometimes you reap what you sow. But before she passed away a couple years earlier, she asked Jesus Christ into her life. So I realized when she didn't wake up, it was the most horrible day when I got that phone call that your mother has expired. That's a horrible word to say, but that's what they told me. And you know what? She didn't expire. She just translated into where the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is. Can I get an amen? So however, when things of the past might not have worked out, we got to keep doing what God tells us to do. Turn to your neighbor and say, however. We start, now, now I want you to listen to this. I wrote this down. We start projecting our past into our potential, and it is a limiting factor because we say, well, you know, it really didn't happen over here, so why am I going to do it? Well, we were looking for a building, picking up dirt, praying over dirt, and believing things, and people giving us words, and it didn't happen. We didn't stop. We still got a building. Same thing's going to happen here. There's land in a building. God's got something coming. However, hallelujah. He said, no, it's a limiting factor. However, God wants us to know that the Bible you have in your hands is full of promises, and those promises are to give you, everybody say, enough. Come on. Enough for whatever you are confronting. So when they tell you the budget got cut by $100,000, however, God's about to do something because she worked at a place where they cut when she was into real estate. She was learning the title thing. They, the, when 08 hit and 09 and all the, the house marking went through the toilet, they had three people on. She was a newbie. She walked in the door. I remember I was sitting in our bedroom and she opened up and she was crying. So what's the matter? She said they let me go. They closed the office. She was all upset. I got up and gave her a hug. Remember that? And we were hugging. I said, because God's got something planned different. God didn't wake up this morning and go, oh, my God, they're going to let her go. What am I going to do? He knows. We just need to trust him like David said. My enemies are all about me. They say there's no God that'll help me. But Lord, I don't care if there's 10,000 on one, 1,000 on a thousand on the right, 10 on thousand on the left. It shall come not near me. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Everybody say, however. God's however will always help you through your whatever. Why don't you look at that again? God's however will always help you through your whatever, whatever you're going through. Is there anybody in here that could raise their hands and say when something looked bleak, God did show up and help you through something? Just raise your hand. Look all around. Okay. 
Praise the Lord. Go to Psalms 23. You all know Psalms 23. Everybody out there knows Psalms 23. Watch this. Verse four, the first one through four. The Lord is. Everybody say is. Say it like you mean it. Is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What does that mean? You know what that means? He knows what you need. He's going to give you enough of what you got to get. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He, watch this, when you went through stuff, restores my soul. Okay, watch this. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Now watch this. What did he just say? Path of righteousness. Look at the first four, the very next one. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He just said path of righteousness. Now he's talking about the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you, however, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David is so confident that the Lord is his shepherd that he presents himself in this as a sheep. I went beside the still waters. He laid me down. He's as a sheep. And he's leading him. He's so confident in him. As God, as his shepherd. We are his sheep. And he is our shepherd. What does a shepherd do? He protects the sheep. Come on. God. One minute he's saying pass of righteous, next minute valley of shadow of death. He's talking about, he's letting us know, church, God has a big however. He's with us no matter what we go through. When you're in the hospital fighting something, he's still there. When you're at work and you get an email, it's going to be a good email. Help me out, somebody. Got a good email. Things may look bad, however. David was in a place of present evil, yet he refused to give in to fear of the, but what if I go through there and those robbers get me? You know what the valley of the shadow of death was? It was a pathway that they had over in Israel that a lot of the robbers would happen where they would rip you and strip you naked and take your thing. So he said, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right in through that, God's with me. He'll anoint my head with oil in the presence of all my enemies. So these guys, he didn't care if they were going to try to jump him. God would be with him. Hallelujah. He wasn't expecting hope. Now what? Now let me finish this statement. He wasn't expecting hope that God would do something. He was saying that the presence of God gave him confidence. That's for you and me. The presence of God is with us. Somebody say praise the Lord. Somebody say preach it, Pastor. Come on. Say however. He wasn't looking for hope. He didn't say about hope. He said the presence of the Lord was with him. He would pass through difficult places without fear. Or what if I, he, oh, I might is there. No, no, no. Now, Paula, do you have the sheet of paper? I'm going to give you a sheet of a however, okay? I want you to look at this because God never deserted anybody. When the leopard showed up who was considered dirty, however, Jesus cleaned him. <laughs> Come on, watch this. When the storm rocked the boat, however, the presence of Christ was in that boat, and he said, hey, peace be still. Come on, somebody. So we're passing out these sheets, and I want you just to look at them. These are in chronological order. Got them out of one of my books. We recopied them all for you. So you can see of all the what if, from sickness to storm to water to wine, to moving things out of the way. God, is, listen, if this doesn't build your faith, I don't know what will, because you can look at it and say, listen, Jesus healed the sick in, in Garcin with the touch of his hand. He healed the Gentile woman who was demon-possessed and her daughter. He did all these things when he showed up. And these are just a few that we have recorded, and they're in chronological order of when he did them, and there's the big biblical reference. You know, when you read them, you don't realize that's a lot right there. Take a look at it. That's a lot. So if you need a healing, he can do it. If you need financial breakthrough, he can do it. What did he tell the disciples? He said, you know what? Go look at that fish and open a fish's mouth and you'll get, that, you'll get the, 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 the tax thing that, that you'll need. Okay. And what did he do? And he came out. What, what about, you, you know, to me, to me, guys, and everybody watching, one of the greatest miracles of all was when there were, were 5,000 men and there were the wives and the children. So they estimate it was about 20,000 people on the side of the cliff and the disciples freaked out because they said it's getting evening so they're going to be getting hungry and we don't have anything 
Let's send them all home. It's time to break so they can take care of themselves. And he said, no, wait a minute. He said, we can feed them. No, we can't. Who's got some food? And it was, a, the Bible says, a little loud. said, my mommy gave me five loaves of bread and two fish. Okay, so can you imagine? I just, I, I, I could preach on this story. I, I bet I could preach six months on it. I, I do. Because it, it adds, there's so many more things in there that you see. But you think about the faith of that little boy. He didn't know any better. He just knew that Jesus said, anybody got any food here I can use? Yeah, I got five loaves and two fish. Remember, 20,000 people. And he turns to the disciples and says, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to break these up in 12 baskets. We're going to pass them out, put them in groups of 150. We're going to pass them. See, I still like to think how they thought, Brian. Those guys had to be saying, is he out of his mind? This is all we got. He said, oh. And then what did Jesus say to the little guy? It's enough. So whatever you got, we're going to do it. So however, go ahead. And those disciples had to freak out when they started passing because they obviously thought a group this size, that's it, about 20 people, it's all going to be gone. And the buckets just kept being passed up the mountain. And everybody's eating until they were full. Then he brought them back, and there's more. Now you guys eat. That's the Jesus that we serve that watches over us. Come on, man. So anything you're going through, he's got five loaves and two fish to do the however anytime you think. I tell you, he's a good God, amen? Go to Psalm 34. I want you to keep that sheet. And I want you to think from time to time. You get a little bit of time today. You know, maybe you're going to lay down, take a nap. Just look at a few of them. And you know, post that somewhere. When you're going through everything that seems nothing's working, nothing's happening, nothing, go to that and look at it and say, no, wait a minute. (laughs) If he can do all this, there's nothing that he can't do in in my life. I will bless the Lord at all times, verse 1. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, shall, my soul shall make boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and they'll be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. Verse 4. I sought the Lord and He heard me. Oh, what did He do? Watch this. And He delivered me from all my fears. What's he saying, Brian? At the very beginning, he said, praise shall continue to be in my mouth. And then he goes on to say, you know what? I sought the Lord, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him from all his troubles. I don't care if it's financial if it's physical, whatever it is, however, God can deliver you from everything and will in the name of Jesus. But you have to cry out to Him. Can I get an amen? amen. Verse 7, this is what we're going to talk about. Camp. I'm going to talk about camping in your backyard. The angel of the Lord encamps are all around those who fear Him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Oh, fear ye the Lord, you His saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Food on your table is a good thing, ain't it? Hot and cold running water is a good thing, ain't it? Clothes on your back's a good thing, ain't it? I know brothers and sisters that went down to Central America just to put a water pump and drill a drill so people could have some clean water. Instead of sitting there bathing with the cows and drinking the waters the cow did. But God sent somebody down there and now those people have good water that they can bathe in, that they can drink. You ought to be thankful that the Lord you serve is watching over you and has blessed you. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, fear the Lord, all ye saints, verse 9. There is no want for those who fear him. Young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. He delivered me from all my what ifs? I changed the word fear into what ifs. What if this? What if that? What if this? What if that? He delivered me from all my troubles, my what ifs. However, is having faith when it looks impossible. And then this morning, God continued to give me what if nobody marries me? What if my sickness comes back? What if my boss lets me go? What if the medicine they gave me doesn't work? 
What if I start this business and it does not work out? Well, you need to look at all the Shark Tank people who stepped out by faith and didn't worry and put all the investments and did what they did. And you know what? Sometimes you have to step out. Can't, all the what ifs can really mess you up. <clears throat> what if my whole savings are gone? They had a passion to believe. We need to have a passion to believe in Christ. Paul did. Peter did. Come on, somebody. Luke did. And they turned the world upside down because of their passion. They walked away from the old thing that they were all into and said there's a new covenant that Christ paid the price. He fulfilled the law and said, forgive them, Father, okay, guess what? And what that blood do? We live on this side of the cross. Can I get an amen? That blood has provided salvation, healing, victory in Jesus' name. We live on this side of the cross. We need to understand the cross of Christ. Did a lot of stuff for us to take and erase all the what ifs because the blood of Jesus is more power than all the what ifs. Can I get an amen? Because you believe and trust in Christ and his finished work at the cross, all your what ifs need to be impaled and go down and change your mind thinking. Renew your mind. Start saying, okay, Lord. What if? For those that are watching out there, I pray that God changes your what ifs to howevers. Come on, everybody. Because however, when God shows up, things become all different. You might not like who you are. God loves you just the way you are. And God can change you. Put your trust in the Lord. If you've never asked Christ and say, God, forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross and rose again three days later. Thank you, Father God, for saving me. If you believe that and you trust Him and turn your passion to the things of Christ, your life will change. Are there some do's and don'ts in the kingdom? Yeah. God's got some commandments in there. But when you follow Him, God has the blessings. But don't let the what is stop you. Stop you from coming to Christ. Because God loves you very much. Till next week, may the Lord bless you. See you at 1030 next Sunday. God bless.